welcome friends. I'm here with Makiel Clare, who just wrote a book called Dream Guidance. Wow, I'm so excited about this book. I just finished it this morning, Connecting to the Soul Through Dream Incubation. Thank you for saying yes to this invitation and making time. I know you're in demand, especially now with your book launch and uh, just so pleased to have you here. It's uh, exciting to be here, Cindy, and I've been looking forward to it. And I know you are a dreamer, so this uh, yeah, this is great. I'm a dreamer, and I'm I feel like I'm a a more aware dreamer since reading your book. And my dream life has really been stimulated by reading this book. And um, you know, you really validated a lot for me in this book and your research and just your whole life of being uh, on a quest for the dream, the history of dreams and how to continue to bring that into your life and other people's lives. And um, I didn't realize that the word quest is the first part of the word question, which is a big part of the dream incubation. So let's open it with this question of the relationship between quest and question. Yes. And um a big part on, uh, on, on, on either it is intention setting or setting an intention before you go to sleep to get an answer from your dream depends on formulating the right uh, question. And uh, to develop a great question, uh, part of the first part of that word is quest. It's kind of an adventure to figure out what is uh, really alive in my soul. And uh, not to jump too quickly to uh, what shall I ask or make it too frivolous. Really uh, push yourself a little bit to ask the courageous question of what is alive? And I think uh, I like to think that as an, as an adventure, as a quest into figuring out the right question to ask and to ask your soul or the larger mystery to open up and provide with some answer. Mm. Yeah, and in the book, so helpful at the end, you have a bunch of sample questions people can work with, because I think that is one of the hardest parts for people is to formulate a really effective question. So this guidance has been helpful in that way. Um, so the question is like for you, what was the quest for you to write this book? I imagine as you um, started writing the book, you you became kind of more intimate with your own dream reality and the waking and sleeping dreams and how they intersect. And tell us a little bit more about why this book is available to us now at this time and, and what that's meant for your life. Well, indeed, it was a, a, it was a quite an undertaking or a quest, despite the book not being overly thick. It took me probably eight years to uh, really... Uh, birth it and it started i've been interested for a long time in dreams and it started uh, 10 years ago with me uh, figuring out that you could ask your dream proactively a question before you went to bed in order to trigger a, a helpful response and uh, at that moment i i started to explore all kinds of questions that uh, were alive in me and see what uh, if the dream would answer it because the dream appeared to uh, pretty quickly, not to be like the wish-fulfilling genie in Al Aladdin, but uh, uh, would uh, answer some questions, but not all of them. And uh, I uh, first had to figure out what that was. And then I read all kinds of books on this topic, work with people uh, and their dreams. And, that, uh, and, and then I really started condensing it in workshops and that led slowly to the structure of the book. And I would take I would travel to all kinds of places where they practice this tradition, like Greece or Africa, or been in Indonesia and South America. And that uh, uh, culminated in this book that uh, took me eight years to write, to, to, to birth, to think, to write. And then uh, I found a great publisher and now we're in the next adventure and that's helping to shepherd the book into the world. Yes, yes, the next adventure. And let's have you share, you share a lot of personal information in the book. I'm really impressed. It must take some vulnerability to, to do that. Um, 
but it really was helpful. The, the personal information you shared and your dreams. And in fact, um, you're the founder of Young Platform, one of my favorite resources. And um, I'm an ambassador for the Young Platform proudly. And that came out of a dream that you had. And I would love for you to share with our listeners that uh, dream and how you took action, which is a big part of the dream incubation process. Um, yeah, yeah. The, this yeah. is just making dreams really practical where you have launched something that so many people all over the world are benefiting from and it came from a dream. Yes, I think that uh, working with dreams is actually the most practical thing we can do, uh, even if they're somewhat uh, elusive by times. This was a spontaneous, helpful dream uh, that uh, led to uh, me starting the Jung platform. And I will briefly describe the dream. In the dream, I am floating above the lake of Zurich, about uh, 50 yards or so. And I see Carl Jung's house at the lake and there's a yard and there's a dock. And uh, in the dream, there's a concrete square platform attached to the yard and to the dock that uh, isn't there in, uh, in, in regular reality. And Jung is working on it and rearranging some beams and I'm just observing this all. Then Jung sits in a chair and reads a book on this, on this platform. And then uh, it's almost like the scene comes to a standstill and Jung and the platform disappear. And a voice behind me says, now you have to draw it, identical to how it was. And I find myself with a pencil in my hand and make a line that's more straight than I thought I could draw. And then I wake up. And I, uh, I took this dream as a suggestion to build a platform for Jung and uh, psychologies like Jung that take into account uh, an unconscious or an other world or a soul. And so initially I gathered some friends uh, with uh, me here in, in, I lived in Salt Lake and I said, do you want to build a Jung Society of Utah? So we built a nonprofit that uh, to my own surprise had a deep resonance in the local, uh, local uh, culture and fabric. And then I, uh, also started uh, building the Jung platform to provide uh, applicable psychological programs for the general audience so that people can learn these concepts of shadow work and synchronicity and all these classic Jungian terms. And uh, I've been uh, working on that for, for many years now, a year, 10 years or so. But that uh, that is... Uh, uh, a spontaneous dream that uh, came, that uh, was clear, gave me a direction in life and has been vocationally guiding me for the last 10, 12, 13 years or so and, uh, and, and continues to nurture me. And I think that uh, we all have those spontaneous dreams in our life. And if we pay attention to it, they can help us connect to uh, what uh, to our soul, to who we are meant to become. And, uh, and so that is one part. I think these dreams come spontaneous, but I also think we can build a relationship with this mysterious force, the great friend that lives within or without and ask it for support on our life journey. And that's what I really worked out in that, uh, that book, Dream Guidance. Mm -hmm. I really like that part about um, making a friendship with the dreamer yeah, that's really important. Yeah. The open the channels of communication. My sense was, you know, in some of my dreams, when they come, I feel an appreciation for that. I want to acknowledge it somehow because I want that stream to continue. I want that um, dreamer to know that this is a way that it can get information to me. So I, I try to acknowledge that dream by taking action like you did or doing some kind of little ritual of Thank you, gratitude. Um, I, I love that notion. And what you uh, uh, already spontaneously do is what you see going back in almost any tradition or culture that had a living relationship with the dream. And they would uh, uh, acknowledge the, the dream and do something to, to follow up so that the dreamer knows, oh, Cindy is uh, paying attention. I can uh, give her more information and better information. 
and then you strengthen that relationship and life becomes easier and we start embodying the deep wisdom within and uh, of course still trouble is on the road but we have a, a support system that can help us navigate uh, the troubles and uh, improve the uh, highs of life mm, mm, well said yes I've been tuning in to the recent dream summit that you've hosted and one of my favorite teachers you have such a great faculty just I mean, that's just a huge sort of evidence that your choice to build the platform and supported by all these uh, amazing beings is is a yes in that direction for one thing. Um, But you're interviewing Michael Mead, and he's one of my favorite mythologists, storytellers, teachers, and uh, he was saying that um, there's certain things that want to come into this world. And the only way that some of these, what Carl Sagan would say, somewhere something incredible is waiting to be known is through the human psyche. And often we have to be in the sleep state for it to come through because the ego is out of the way. Yes, and then, yes. And then it says, but, but uh, don't worry, the ego wakes up before you. <laughs> So we still have to do the work of deciphering the dream, right? And getting the the personal sort of in its place. And in terms yeah, of- yeah, yeah. And, and follow up on it. And uh, uh, it makes me think of that, uh, of that classic story where Paul McCartney got the tune for the song yesterday in his dream. And so he has a, a quality, a talent that is uh, receptive to uh music uh, however then he still has to write it down uh for with the band to uh, write the lyrics get it on a, on a label make sure that it gets into the world so there's many steps that that still need to be done afterwards mm-hmm. but uh, these ideas like that whole piece of music uh, of uh for paul mccartney or for in my case uh, uh these uh, the, the company or another case, uh, someone's uh, a book or a, a plot in the book or whatever uh, is being available in this field around us. And, and if we open up to the world of dream, it can enter. And then we need to put in the work to bring it further into the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wanted to say a little bit about the um, Pacifica Graduate School you attended and you're um, doing work in the field as in psychology, you have clients and um, the background. Now, how much of your training there involved dream work? Was it a big part or? It, 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 uh, it has some part, it wasn't uh, the biggest part, but I also uh, came there and on the first uh, as an introduction evening, there were Michael Mead and James Hillman. Mm. And I was so blown away. I was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is the psychology I like. Yeah. This is what I want to study. So uh, they, uh, they opened up the door to Pacifica. And th- what a great thing about Pacifica is, is that they provide depth psychological perspective. So a lot of current psychology is a cognitive behavioral. Uh, if I change my thinking, things become different. But the notion that these there's something more residing in our soul that wants to come out, that wants to live, and uh, how do you understand uh, those dynamics? That is what uh, Pacifica really added to the education in psychology, by which I became also a, a mental health therapist. And uh, um, and dreams are a great way to see what's going on inside the depths of our being. So it was part of it, but I must say most of my uh, my training and learning is te- working with teachers, studying, reading books, and working on myself. That's also what I hope with the Young Platform to provide uh, places where people can come and and get a lot of different perspectives on dreams, um, because there's not really a specific school or definitely not an, an educational a program that can help people become good dream workers or work with their own dream. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's such a great platform. You, the programs you provide are really high caliber. And um, I can see you offering um, a dream coach certification, you know, similar to what your sister's doing is offering a, a young Yin coaching certification. Maybe that's what's next for you. I'm kind of hoping secretly that maybe you'll offer that. And I'll, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll make a mental note of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the other teachers that I admire and I've hosted on conversation is Robert Bosnack. And I listened to your interview with him on the Dream Summit as well. And he has the embodied imagination technique. I wonder, I know that that's a big part of your dreaming um, experience. Would you like to share anything about the embodied imagination technique? Yes, I, I, I love Bosnak as well. And I did a three year dream uh, training with him to learn that technique. And what I think that is so helpful in that technique is that he incorporates the body and the emotional experience of the dream. Otherwise, a dream remains very often uh, a mental exercise, but to evoke real change, uh, a lot of research also shows that we, if we incorporate the body and the experience, that we can uh, that we can change. And in a, in a nutshell, let's say that you would have a dream in which you see a crocodile and then you're scared and you run away. You could uh, you could tap into the energy of crocodile and into your own fear and then hold those states in your own body and then the, they would they would infuse each other and and together those states would create a different state of consciousness and then you become more uh, capable to adapt to your environment and uh, uh, and th and that is why why that why why embodied dream work and uh, and, and being with the experience is so uh, so effective in uh, in dream work. Yeah, there's a lot of neurological evidence to that in um, movement therapies like uh, neuro movement. I, I teach an embodied movement practice, and um, it's it's about how like if we have a limitation in our body, then we teach our body to move in a different way. It can support the um, plasticity of the brain to wire in a way to find a way around that limitation. So I kind of see that correlation with the psyche trying to get information to the conscious mind and dreams. If it can't get it in one way, it'll try another. Yeah. 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 Beautiful, beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, example of, of how the body can help and that it doesn't all have to be figured out mentally, but that there are other Places where actually healing occurs, and how to be with that, and in movement is a great way to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm feeling like the the culturally we're at a time where the changes that we're feeling, you know, evolutionary uh, momentum is forcing because of the seemingly impossible. Um, tasks ahead of us and problems like um, Einstein said you can't solve a problem with the same level of thinking that created it like that we're at this impasse where we have to access information from a different state in order to see solutions to our problems would you agree yeah. or what's your feeling about that yeah I uh, I, I agree and uh, uh, that is also why that question is so important because if you ask a question that is too much on the same level as where the problem occurs, you don't get a uh, creative response. And uh, so you wanna, uh, Einstein also said, if I have a, a, a problem that I need to solve and I have an hour at a time, I will take the first 50 minutes to figure out the right question. <laughs> yeah. Once I have that question, I can solve the problem. And uh, the same with, uh, the necessity to ask a good question for your own problem and uh, and, and and for people to, to really think about it a little bit. Yeah, so asking good questions, taking the time for uh, for for that and and then having the ability to tap into the imagination because that is what a dream helps us do. It it, it touch taps into a mystery that is deeply creative and very intelligent 
and can come up with solutions that we or the ego is not capable of, uh, of, of finding, while the larger psyche soul uh, does have that uh, creativity. Mm. Yeah, indeed, it's all about creativity, right? Yeah. The sense yeah. of it, like if there's something wanting to get into my awareness, sometimes I'll feel pressure or confusion or doubt. And I, I recognize that now through the pattern of that feeling that it's something wanting to get into my perception that my current perception doesn't allow. So ah. if, I, if I relax and allow my perception to extend beyond what's familiar, then that thing, which is in the subtle, subtler realms can bleed through that yeah. thing wanting to be known, but it's, so then it leads me to, you know, suggest that the um, answer is in the question and the question is in the answer, right? Like the thing that's wanting to get to me gets me to ask the question, what is this? Which opens that sort of pathway and then getting my body in the right state of relaxation is the, the portal into the receptivity that's required for something new. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. And I love how you uh, have recognized that the uh, onset of creativity comes with, uh, with uh, uh, insecurity, uncertainty, uh, tensing up, and uh, how you learned uh, to recognize it and then can relax into it so that this uh, new information has a chance to uh, come into you. Mm. And, and I think that that has some similar features to the same process of asking your dream a question of there's some uh, so something similar to how do you get yourself in an energetic place so that you're most receptive to getting an answer that's that's where I also write in the ritual I call it the rituals uh, are surrounding this work but the rituals have really to do with how do I get in a place that uh, I communicate that I'm open, that I want to receive this, that I'm actually able to hear what comes, because asking a question is just half the work. Hearing the answer is really the other part, but you have to be open for that, because sometimes uh, the, 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 uh, the, the suggestions come back that you're not particularly interested in, or you didn't want to hear, or you need to do something that uh, maybe you wouldn't have chosen because we have to deal with maybe loneliness or stuckness or whatever instead of something more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes me think of the term environment and how important environment is. Like for me, being in nature, I feel that my field expands. I'm more receptive and open and I remember things and oh. um, receive information there and the same in the dream time I've set up my space in a way that's attractive to um, not only receiving dreams but remembering them like you mentioned you know in the book about writing them down having something you know available for that because when we start to awaken information is state bound and when we're in that sleep state we're accessing the information when we shift states into the waking state we can lose that so easily so would you like to say some things about environment and how our environment can support us being a more effective dreamer well the old idea is that people would go to a cave or a top of a mountain or uh, a special location where a saint would have lived uh, to uh, to dream and in the old Greek tradition of Asclepius people would travel often for days to the temple of Asclepius in order for a healing dream to occur so location has very often been an, uh, an, an important part of of getting an important dream now it's not only the outer location of the cave or the mountain there's also to do with this inner space. We need to travel internally to an inner space where 
we are at a good place to say to the dream, dream I would love to have an, an answer to this problem that I struggle with. I, I worked uh, recently with someone that said at the great question of what is one of the biggest blocks in my dating life? This was a, an, an heartfelt question. So this person was had internally walked to that place where they could ask that, where it was heartfelt. And so uh, location, external, internal is very important because it puts you in whatever way we like to think it in and frequency where we can receive it or an energetic place that attracts or uh, an, an space in which we open to getting getting the right uh, the right information for that what is important for our life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Is there an example that you want to share. Any any examples that you feel inspired to share with our listeners about your personal dream experiences? Well, I can, uh, I can, I can maybe finish that example I just started. Is this, this uh, so? This man uh, who asked a dream, uh, "What is my uh, biggest blockage in my dating life?" And uh, he, he traveled to. Uh, so one is uh, he he uh, started to decide. He came to the conclusion that what was really important for him was figuring out a better way to find a partner. And then he thought. Sure, I can ask, how do I find a partner? Or what uh, can I do to find a partner? And uh, yet he, uh, came, after a bit of work, he came to the idea, let me first ask the question, what is the obstacle that, uh, that creates uh, the biggest obstacle for me to find a partner and, uh, in my dating life? So uh, identifying a problem, writing, getting a question is step two. And then three is engage in some ritual, which is just a way of putting yourself in the internal, external space that communicates to the dream that you want to have an answer. Then um, uh, he did sleep and he wrote down the next day, which is very important, writing it down, because as you said, we travel from the dream world into this world. On the threshold, a lot of insight evaporates and dreams are gone within five minutes, one minute, 30 minutes, if we don't write them down, most of them at least. And so he had the dream and that was, he says, I am uh, uh, driving in a car in a square uh, tunnel. And then I see a car in front of me who's slowing down. And I think that I see a mountain lion. If I come a little closer, I see it's a tiger. I get really scared. And I uh, put my car in the reverse and I drive back. So that was his, uh, his dream. And uh, one way uh, that uh, we could work with dreams that doesn't require a lot of uh, preconceived pre uh, pre-knowledge about dream work is asking the question, what is happening? So when he asked himself, what is happening in my dream? He said, I'm in a tunnel that in itself gives a, a bit of an, an, an feeling space of, ah, I'm in a tunnel in my dating life and I'm meeting uh, a being or I'm meeting a situation that I find very frightening. And when I meet something that I find very frightening, I back out. Now, he can use that template and just look at his life. Where in my life, in my dating life, do I meet something that I find frightening and my reflexes uh, moving back? And uh, whether it is... Uh, asking the right person or when things get uh, intimate or what is it that uh, that causes fear that makes you move away and uh, and and then uh, slow down that moment when you notice it and start figuring out is this really a moment that I see a tiger or should I instead of being gone walk to the tiger and see if I can engage with Tiger or this person or this intimacy or wherever. But it gave him an, an, an ability to uh, readjust his dating life a little bit going forward and making sure that if he gets scared, that he at least asks himself the question, should I run or should I move toward? Mm -hmm. 
brings yeah. up that concept of being a little more lucid in our experience, right? Like you've yeah. already already created that lucidity before going into that next dream because you have a, a a continuation instead of just stopping at that emotion or feeling. Um, but where when you're sharing that, it makes me realize that the question for dreaming isn't just important in the beginning, the question you ask, but the questions you ask afterwards about the dream that you had or the environment that we can create by being supported by another person who's assisting us in interpreting that dream, even though, as you mentioned in the book, and um, we well know that our symbols are our symbols and we can only interpret our own dream, but we can be supported by being held in a space with another person who's a dreamer who can help us ask the good questions that extract the essence of that dream wisdom and help us take action on it. Yeah, and in and, and, and almost any culture around the world and in history, dreaming would not be so much a personal activity, mm. but far more something that would be shared with the tribe or shared with someone else. People would go to the temple of Asclepius in the old Greek times and uh, be with a whole group of people that would ask a question and the next day would work with the local priest to figure out what, what, what could this dream indicate as a diagnosis or prescription or whatever cure uh, might, uh, might be in it. And, uh, and so we live in a culture that is uh, uh, where we don't often, not as much, come together and share dreams. And I think, and I most of my dreams I just write down myself. But I find it uh, uh, helpful to share. It's known that Carl Jung uh, would share his dreams with his gardener, and uh, he said his gardener that he, that he didn't know anything about psychology or dreams. But he thought it was very helpful just to have someone ask him questions or give feedback because you might sometimes think yeah that's there's something to that or oh no it's not that but oh no wait, wait it's this and so in the dialogue with other people uh the the dream work can flourish even further mm. in fact yes indeed that's happened to me recently with um having a dream come through and then in my waking life, having it validated, like the question stimulated something in the dream, there was a, a, a response, but it was only the beginning of the response. The yeah. response continued in my waking life through different synchronistic events that continued to um, reinforce what was shared, but add, added to it. Isn't that beautiful when life starts to conspire uh, in favor of you and uh, gives the first uh, insights in the dream and then there's a coincidence that, uh, that helps you further and the, the person says just the right thing. And I think that is an, it's an interplay between us and the soul or the mystery in which we set out uh, a genuine uh, intention, a question to the universe or the soul, and then the soul starts helping us to figure it out when it is relevant to our life path or our health or our happiness. And uh, it, uh, uh, it can come through from the dream, but it's not the only way or the, uh, the only place we need to wait. We are attentive to day-to-day -day life. There's so many ways in, uh, where, where life continues to inform us mm -hmm. and then we can of course continue to ask the dream a follow-up question and make sure that we nurture that relationship so that we're attentive to the inclinations of the soul to support yeah would you say it's a reflection of the relationship inside between the left and right hemisphere of the brain, like the, the right side of the brain, more the dreaming reality, spacious, timeless, and then the left side, more logical, linear. If those two are working together, um, we're more apt to take action on our dreams and, and actually dream. But if we're more dominant in one hemisphere than the other, 
will it affect our ability to not only dream but take action on the dream being that yeah, it's a, it's a, it, i haven't thought about it in those terms but when you describe that i think yeah it is this one part that is more the dreaming and the non-linear and then we have the linear aspect and they need to work together so that uh we can bring things into the world it's not enough to have a great intuition or to have a dream about how to improve my health or like the person how to uh now he knows that what kind of block he has in his dating life well the knowledge alone doesn't solve the problem mm -hmm. and so yeah we it needs it needs something and and maybe a, a, a walking of hand of the two hemispheres together would be uh, would be a helpful aspect mm -hmm. yeah and how much of the work that you do with your clients involves helping them with their dreams is that a, a pretty significant percentage or yeah, it's a, it's it's a very uh, uh, um, um, almost anyone that I work with, I'm 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 known that I work with dreams, and it's also uh, even if people don't dream, they start dreaming, and it dreams just give a, a great diagnostic overview where is a person in their life. Uh, it shows the direction the soul wants to develop, character show up that uh, embody uh, potentials in the person's life. And so I, I, it's not in a session, it's not only that I work on the dream, it could be sometimes it's five minutes, sometimes to the whole hour, but uh, the dreams are an integral part of, uh, of the way I do therapy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a while back, but I worked with a young analyst for a short time and it was right before my first session with her, I had a big dream and I remember, I, I think I read it in your book too, that um, that's common, that like when you're gonna do this work, the psyche will give you something to work with. Yes. Getting it recognizes the opportunity. Yes, and uh, what uh, Freud and Jung already noted, noticed is that very often that initial dream uh, puts uh, out uh, uh, what the essential uh, trouble is, often how to find medicine for the for the problem, how the journey of therapy uh, will unfold. Um, that initial dream is, a, is is generally a very a very important dream, and it's very interesting that that uh, almost always happens to people that are really committed to going on a journey with a therapist that works with dreams, and boom big dream as a as a starting point yeah and it wasn't it wasn't um like a conscious suggestion right i'm sure my subconscious was picking up on it but i didn't realize that at the time until after the fact when i shared that dream with her i said oh i had this big dream and surprised me she she wasn't surprised at all she was sort of anticipating me yeah. coming with the dream so that was yeah, it's validating, you know, validated that, and let me trust in the process and um, acquiesce to something greater than, you know, my personal will to get better or heal or wake awaken. There was something else having its way through me that knew more. You could see the bigger picture. Yeah, that is uh, that is the the. The, the the marvelous thing of it huh? it, it sees the bigger picture there's something inside of us that knows what we are about to become and is really interested in helping uh, us to get there it also does allow for free will and we can meander in all kinds of directions and it seems to be fine whether uh, that we do that so it's very non-judgmental yet when we ask it to help us it's uh, on standby, ready to educate and support. And I, I think that is one of the big things. It's not uh, indulging us. It's not uh, answering questions that aren't relevant to our life path. But if we come with a genuine question about our lives, that is whether 
whatever it is, as long as we are, we feel emotionally strong about it, it's uh, on standby. So many traditions revert to it that there's something larger than us that wants us to help us. And it doesn't mean a, a life without problems, but it gives su su suggestions on how do you deal with these problems? How do you solve or cure or attend to the wounds that you came uh, with into the world or that happened to you while being alive? Because being alive is not always the easiest uh, enterprise activity that we can do. And, uh, and, and, it, and it helps us to find a better way to, to be alive. And life becomes more colorful, more enjoyable, more soulful, and uh, and start support also in the little things, the synchronicities and and uh, and other intuitions that we can have about life. Mm, that's great. Yeah, I think it's self-interested. This consciousness, you know, it's it's. Um... It wants a, a form that allows its fullest expression. And, and if there's something in the way of it being as creative and free as possible through the individual form or the collective form of a community, it's going to bring attention to what's in the way because it's clearing a path for itself. Yeah. 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 That, is, that is a nice also clearing a path for itself, mm -hmm. which really suggests this merging of us with the soul in which when we do that the soul itself is at work and is creating its own ongoing uh, creation tapestry of life of which we are just uh, in surface of mm -hmm. and so uh, life is no longer an, an, an solo activity but we're more the front men in this larger enterprise in which uh, all kinds of figures live through us ongoingly creating a future and the creation of that future in life is really beautiful if we give the soul the space to do that. Mm. Yeah, I find that, you know, it gets really, there's an excitement in the field when this uh, consciousness meets itself in another form that's also interested in giving it more freedom to create through us. There's a aliveness there that sparks creativity in the sense that something fresh comes through what we're saying that we haven't heard ourselves say before or we experience ourselves in a new way because we've um, given permission to show up and allow what's present and spontaneous instead of having a script or um, an agenda we just open the space show up and um, be a passenger consciousness, witnessing this playful interaction of consciousness relating to itself through these seemingly separate forms. Yeah, beautiful. Yes, and I, I must say, I myself have in the, in the last year also increasingly learned how can you step out of the way and put less uh, plans on the future, but tend more to the impulses of life and uh, and dance with it and see where it goes instead of me saying oh this needs to go this direction and here are the steps and then you get to that old saying that uh, god is laughing uh, at you while you're making plans yeah because it uh, goes somewhere else but how can you let the the uh creation of life self-reveal while being attentive and dancing along with it and putting aside some of your preconceived notions of how things should should uh, develop and I think that's a great art that uh, yeah that's a great art yeah precisely it's that um, letting the dream wisdom come through and tracking the synchronicities because it's like wherever the synchronicities are that's the direction you know for me if I go in the direction and there's synchronicities, I know that something's pulling me further in that direction. If there's blocks or, um, you know, just clearly it's not the time or not the right direction, then, you know, I pull back and wait for more clarity. It's yeah. And, and, and it's sometimes 
means that uh, we need to walk towards the tiger because that is the place where we need to be. Well, we are like, well, that's the last place I want to be. And, uh, and can we then go, go in that direction? And even there, we can ask the dream again for help and say, gosh, a dream, I know I should walk towards the tiger, but I'm really afraid. Mm. Uh, how, can I, uh, how can I be more courageous? Or what can I do to, uh, to walk that direction? And then the energy of the dream will start uh, supporting you. Of course, you still have to walk yourself, but there's, again, there's ongoing support. And with this notion of asking the dream a question, you can do it once. We can also just on larger journeys, like how to find a partner or how to build a business, there will be ongoing questions that uh, you can ask and could benefit from, uh, from some additional uh, support. Mm. I like that you brought that up because it takes us back to that embodied imagination where you imagine you are the tiger. So you shift your perception from being the one that's afraid of the tiger to becoming the tiger, embodying both at the same time. And that brings in new information. Yeah, yeah. You can, you can sense into what is, what is this tiger energy and uh, and that would uh, almost uh, always be beneficial to uh, break open your habitual consciousness and get a broader sense of consciousness, which is better able to adapt because then you have a little bit of the tiger in you. And then you probably have some energy that uh, can help you meet the tiger in your dating life wherever element of fear uh, it is that you encounter yeah yeah good point and i do i do going back to that consciousness idea that it is all consciousness right and and it just it's constantly wanting to experience itself in different forms and if it allows if we our perception allows that then it's giving consciousness the freedom to shift from this form into the tiger and experience the tiger and what is the tiger's perspective of us what is how is it encountering us and um, yeah i think if we had more empathy that way and we could put ourselves in other people's perspectives we'd have um a kinder world we have a kinder world, we're more uh, adaptable, more resilient, more original, more elastic. And, uh, and we uh, experience a ra broader range of consciousness. Because if we can experience tiger and the street and the car and the tunnel, who are all manifestations of consciousness, then uh, our range of experiencing uh, states of consciousness becomes broader. And then we're just... Uh, more adaptable and more loving and and we have a better interest more interesting life yeah and that just sums up exactly what the dream incubation process is is really to to make space for all of what you just shared you know better life better flexibility better coherence better relating all of these things are enhanced when we turn our attention towards the unknown i think the unknown can be known right like the mystery can be known if we have a desire um, it doesn't mean we ever get to the bottom of it it's infinite right it's always there's always things unknown wanting to be known but um yeah just making the commitment to be um open to learning yeah and that's a, it is a really important commitment that comes back to uh, one, one thing is to ask the question and the other thing is to listen to the answer. And, uh, uh, and if you, you're committed to learning and also things become in a, in, a, in a journey, so, okay, maybe I'm not that good yet, but in the future I become better and better. And, uh, and the commitment to listen and to learn, it, uh, it seems to attract more support and uh, i said life is uh, complex enough uh, if we can have some support along the along the way then uh, then that uh, would be a great thing mm. 
Yeah, well, your book is certainly supportive and I really um, want to recommend it to everyone. And I'd love to uh, give you a chance to share more about your website, the Young Platform, um, anything. I think you do have a, a course coming up on the book for anyone who purchased the book on the platform and I'm signed up. So let's get some more people to join us. Tell us how. Yes, there's a course on July 9th. Uh, you can join for free if you either show a, a receipt of the book or uh, leave a uh, review on Amazon or wherever you want, uh, bought the book. Otherwise, it's $67. And in that, uh, what we really will do is uh, identify uh, the question that is alive, uh, formulate a question, figure out some rituals to ask the question, and uh, then uh, be really prepared for the, for the dream night. And that, uh, that uh, will be uh, uh, fun and helpful. And uh, people can buy the book on uh, Amazon or Barnes and Nobles, or uh, there's a great website called Book Depository that uh, ships books uh, worldwide for free. So if you live somewhere where there's no Amazon, then you still can get uh, the book. Uh, of course, there's an audio book and, an, and a Kindle version. And, um, People can learn more about me at my website, machielclerk.com. It's my first and last name, M-A-C-H-I-E-L-K-L-E-R-K. -E -E probably in your notes somewhere, um, if you uh, want to learn more. And on the Young platform, we have many great uh, programs, whether it is uh, you're a beginner in dreams or Jungian psychology, uh, or you're a bit more advanced, we have over 150 programs with the best teachers in the world in, uh, in, in, in depth and soul and Jungian psychology and in dreams. And people can learn about how to work with their shadow, uh, in uh, the tarot, uh, uh, synchronicity, find more meaning or uh, creativity, and many ways of working with the dream. So that is, in a nutshell, some uh, some 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 resources that uh, that there are for uh, for people that are interested. Yes, and all the notes will contain the links, so that will be handy if you just look in the description below. And um, just really, what a pleasure! So proud of you, and congratulations on getting this material out there in such a. Um, a really, I want to say, structured way that makes it approachable um, and validating. There's so many ways I felt validated in hmm. my working with dreams. I really haven't had any formal training on it. It's just been more of a an intuitive deep dive over the years um, through direct experience. But I loved reading about the history of dreams and your travels all over the world. Um, researching this and having direct experience of it and finding that some of the things I was intuiting were tracking this ancient lineage of dreams. Yes, it's, it's great that you're in this ancient tradition of, uh, of dreamers and thank you for uh, your kind words and uh, I really try to make it uh, accessible for, uh, for anyone, um, whether you have a bit of dream work or no dream work, you just want to see if the dream can answer some questions, go and test it for yourself. You'll, you'll dream anyway tonight. Uh, put some, uh, some, word, some question out and see uh, if it works because at the end of the day, I think it should be one's own experience and uh, there's no harm in, uh, in test and play. So people carry this old wise counselor inside of them and I think we all kind of intuitively know it's out there. And some people pray, other people meditate, some people dance, some people listen to synchronicities, intuitions, and dreams is just an old tradition in which uh, the soul has been uh, communicating with us. And I hope uh, to have made that uh, uh, accessible. Well, you sure have. and. Uh, in addition, the the Dream Summit is still available, even though, um, yeah, it's just really fresh last week, but we can still purchase it on the Young Platform. I'll put a link in the 
video description for that too. And th these are world-class dream teachers on this platform that have brought their best um, wisdom forward. So the way that you kind of brought this together where people can access all these experts in one place for such an affordable price and just continue to watch over and over this timeless wisdom. It's, it's a great resource. I'm really grateful to have it and to have hosted you today. It was really a delight. Thank you, Cindy. It was such a pleasure to be with a fellow dreamer. And uh, thank you for your questions and your attentiveness. And uh, it was a joy to be here. Mm. Well, you're most welcome. And I'm going to go leave my review on Amazon since I just finished the book today and um, add to that algorithm of bringing the dreams to the surface. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Um, Really appreciate your support as well. Bye for now.